Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are done, and from you no secrets are given. Thank the God of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the last time. of the apostles. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of those, these, became a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for him, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Word of the Lord. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 1, found in our service bulletin. Let us recite the psalm responsibly in our full verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. And they meditate on the law of the day and night. They are like trees planted by.
by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so the wicked. They are on the path of the wind or the way. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is different. A reading from the first letter of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of the God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. And those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. And whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you, have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, for they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. 
I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Eternal God, you have given your Son authority in heaven and in earth. Grant that we may never lose the vision of his kingdom, but serve him with hope and joy. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me begin by wishing all our mothers, grandmothers, and great-grandmothers. Any great-great-grandmothers here today? Wishing all of you a very happy Mother's Day. For just a little perspective, where would any of us, including Jesus, be without his mother? Over the last few weeks, we have been working our way through portions of Jesus' final discourse in the Last Supper from the Gospel of John. As I'm sure you have noticed, the readings have been getting progressively denser and more theologically complex. That reading this morning was a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? Yes. This trend continues this morning as we move into the conclusion of the final discourse. Recall that the final discourse is an extended farewell address and teaching Jesus delivers to his gathered disciples within the context of the Last Supper. They are words of reassurance to the disciples as he prepares for the events that will shortly follow now that his hour has arrived and it is time for his mission to be fulfilled. Once Jesus has finished all he has to say to the disciples, he turns and prays to God the Father. This prayer is the conclusion of the final discourse and the Last Supper. When it ends, Jesus and the disciples leave the city and go to the garden where he will soon be arrested. Our reading today is in the middle portion of this prayer. One can sense both the immediacy and the intimacy of this prayer. Along with the disciples, we are merely eavesdroppers on this conversation between Father and Son. As we have heard throughout the fourth gospel, the unity of Father and Son is readily apparent, as well as the obedience of the Son to the will of the Father. Jesus models the confidence and certainty of prayer which he has been teaching and reassuring the disciples. As the first sentence makes clear, at this point in the prayer, Jesus is praying directly for his disciples. He acknowledges that all things come of the Father, for they were yours and you gave them to me. In his teaching, Jesus has made God's name known to them. The full implication of this phrase, made your name known, 
is much more than simply preaching and teaching about the goodness of God. Rather, it implies that Jesus has revealed the very identity and nature of God to those whom he has been given, and that they have come to understand, to truly and fully know, that Jesus has indeed been sent from God. As the prologue of the fourth, fourth gospel makes clear from the very beginning, Jesus is God. And God has chosen to dwell among us. As Jesus' hour approaches, the verb tenses in our narrative continually shift, collapsing time around the events at hand. Jesus speaks of those events as happening, as having already been accomplished and about to occur. Now that Jesus is preparing to meet his hour, and fully aware that this will take him away from his disciples, he, in turn, entrusts their care and protection back to God. He certainly presents a worrisome state of affairs. He has protected them in God's name, but now returns them to God. They will remain in the world and will need such guidance and protection. For John, in these accounts, the world is not our modern concept of an overcrowded planet and all who dwell therein. For the fourth evangelist, the world is the forces aligned against the will of God. It is in that sense that Jesus and his disciples have lived in the world, but have not been part of the world. And for that reason, the world has hated them. It is a darkness that even worked its way into Jesus' inner circle, turning one of them away from the light. That anger and hate tries to silence the message by putting the messenger to death. We know it didn't work. We also know as Jesus taught and as Martin Luther King told us, darkness, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Oh my goodness, I think the battery just went dead. <laughs> Can you hear my outside voice? Yes. Yeah. As Jesus and Dr. Martin Luther King told us, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. It is significant to note, however, that as difficult and dangerous as the world may be, Jesus does not pray that his followers be taken out of the world. He does not pray for the challenges to be removed, but for protection as they face the challenges. Indeed, he even says that rather than hiding from the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, he is sending them out into the world. Just as he was sent from the Father to make God's name known in the world, so now his followers are charged with continuing that same work in the world. It will certainly not always be easy. It could even be dangerous, dare I say deadly. It is living the life of selfless love, humility, and service exemplified in the foot washing earlier that same evening. It is the life of sacrificial love about to begin at this prayer's conclusion. The world can still be a very dangerous and even evil place. There are still many forces at large trying to exert power and control through intimidation, suppression, and violence, both here at home and throughout the world. There are spheres of darkness resistant to the light. As disciples, however, we too are called to be sent into the world. No matter how much we may desire to simply get away from it all, our place is in the world, even if we may not fully be of the world. As disciples of the one who is the light that came into the world, we are called to continue that work in the world. It will not always be easy or comfortable, but we have been entrusted into the care of God by Jesus himself, 
and we are promised the presence and the protection for which he prayed. And we have been given the assurance that we too can pray in confidence to God, the Father of all, and in whose image we are all created. It is why we can joyfully go out into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia.
and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that as we probe the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Who knew changing batteries would be so difficult? <laughs> Felt pretty good this morning, huh? Yes. Yeah, it's going to only last about 36 hours with this lower humidity that we're going to get. Anybody see the Northern Lights this weekend? I looked last night, the night before, unfortunately it was too cloudy, but you know, there, I saw a picture posted online um, of someone who took a picture in Miami and saw it. So apparently it reached it reached down that far. Unfortunately, we didn't get them, but what are you going to do? We got a bunch of announcements. You can find them in your bulletin. Um, of course, the food drive and t-shirt drive continue. We've been talking about that for weeks. Um, I'm getting on the right page here. It's in the Centering Prayer is on Thursday, the 16th. Um, there is a uh, field trip, if you will, coming up to the Florida Holocaust Museum on the 28th of May. And have, have anyone here been there, been to the Holocaust Museum here? This, this announcement let me know that there actually was one here in St. Petersburg. I didn't know it. Um, but um, it's going to be on the 28th of May, and we'll go down and have a tour and then gather and have lunch somewhere down there back to the to be determined. Promises to be a good time, so if you're interested, there's a sign-up sheet in the narthex. And um, as it says here, the cost of it is $15. Next Sunday is Pentecost. Pentecost is one of the great feast days of the church. So, and we will be gussying up that service a little bit next week with incense and chanting and uh, a couple extra vestments and such. Um, traditionally, red is the color of Pentecost. Red, is, red, red represents the color of the Holy Spirit. And so you'll see a lot of red in here, and traditionally people wear red shirts on Pentecost. So if you've got some you know, red stuff you want to pull out of the closet, next Sunday is the day to wear it. We've got a couple other things coming up to note. On January 9th, ECW is um, putting together a, a Paradise Express Sunset Dolphin Tour. Assuming this is a boat ride that goes out of the Gulf and you watch the sun go down. This is not a fundraiser, this is not, this is just a fun trip. Okay, so um, there'll be more information in the bulletin next week about that, but um, think about that on, on June 9th. It should be a lot of fun. Um, one other thing we're doing is the Church Periodical Club Collection. This is a church organization that helps uh, poor missions and churches in the, within the uh, Episcopal Church that uh, need things like books and magazines and periodicals and stuff. So if you would like to donate to this, envelopes are available in the narthex as well. Any birthdays today? I'm seeing a hand. You have a birthday? Well, come on out here. Let's pray. And wish you a happy birthday. Saturday yesterday, Saturday next. Saturday next, okay, great. So let's pray for your birthday. Okay. I just have to make sure before I embarrass myself even more. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Debbie as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy birthday. Any big plans? Any big plans? Oh, 
It's great. It's great. I watch from the noise and the smoke from the candles on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> Anniversaries? I've heard rumor of an anniversary. Ah, uh, the weather change. Tweaks, oh, so some of that tweaks that perfect stuff too, so you gotta get all over. Did you not get the memo? <laughs> he said it were older? I said, did you get the memo? <laughs> I'm thinking that's old news at this point, <laughs> for all of us. Um, so I've already chatted with your wife, and I understand, yeah, just a little bit. She loved the secret. Well, when you were over here, we were over here. Um, but I understand your anniversary is next Saturday, and it's 67 years. Wow. 67 years. <laughs> As I told her earlier, that's longer than many people live in my family. And hardly anybody stays married that long. <laughs> so 67 years, that's an accomplishment that some people do. Yeah. So let's pray. I need to get reminded of your names again. Marge and Bob. Before I call you the Sally and David or something. Gracious God, we give you thanks and thanks for this day. And we especially give you thanks uh, as the anniversary approaches of the marriage of Marge and Bob. We ask you to continue to pour your blessings upon the two of them as they continue to share into their seventh and eighth decades of married life. That sounds scary, doesn't it? <laughs> we ask that you continue to guide and protect them, give them love, patience, and and. Uh, just to sanctify their time together and support them in all the work they still have left yet to do. And all this we ask in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Happy anniversary. You are. Sorry. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Oh Lord, pardon me? Travel. Any travelers? I guess that means someone's traveling. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to need to print that one out here because uh, we're moving into that season. Huh? Detroit. Okay. Yeah. Tourist capital of the upper Midwest. The tiger. I've been to Detroit. I've been to the airport too, they have the line down the middle. So yeah. Like this road. Yeah. So when are you leaving? I'm leaving Friday and bringing the twenty fifth. Okay. I think I'll change my flight. Just don't tell anybody that you're here about the being surprised. <laughs> What you want to be here. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, especially Mary, trip to Detroit. Surround her with your loving care, protect her from every danger, and bring her safely to her journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Have a good time. Tell the tigers I said hi. <laughs> o oh Lord our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things, and by your will they were created and had their being.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Give thanks and It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Amen. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people. In your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died, for us our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. you are, become what you receive.
let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And our Father, send us up to the work you have given us to do. To love and serve you as the faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, to be our great glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and remain with you always. Amen. into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.